Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from our channel, Immortal News. In today's segment, we're bringing you updates on notable personalities who have sadly passed away today, August 14th, and in the recent days gone by. In addition to that, we've curated special tributes that you won't want to miss. Later on, we will discuss the chilling events of a Pennsylvania explosion, delve into the unexpected health challenges faced by Sir David Jason and Paul Felder unravel the mystery behind a young boy's sudden passing in South Australia, and touch upon the startling MiG-23 jet mishap in Michigan. So do stay with us for these profound stories. But before we delve into the details, please show your love and support by giving this video a like. Thank you. Number 11. Clarence Avant, the silent force behind music's icons. Clarence Avant, fondly termed the godfather of black music, passed away on the 13th of August at the age of 92 in his Los Angeles home. His impact on the music industry is monumental. Born in a humble setting in Greensboro, North Carolina in 1931, Avant made his mark on the entertainment industry as an executive, mentor, and trailblazer. Highlighted by the 2019 Netflix documentary The Black Godfather, Avant's story resonated with many. He managed greats like Sarah Vaughan, Lalo Schifrin, and Bill Withers, he also played a pivotal role in Michael Jackson's Bad World Tour and headed iconic labels like Motown Records. But beyond the limelight, his influence expanded to advising a diverse range of figures, from Quincy Jones and Jay-Z to Barack Obama. The former president credited Avant with boosting his political profile by securing him a prime slot during the 2004 Democratic Convention. Jones, a close associate, noted Avant's unique ability to craft deals without seeking accolades. Avant's achievements stretched across the entertainment industry. He was a pioneer, bridging racial divides, especially notable with the establishment of MGM Records-backed Venture Records, a milestone collaboration between a black-owned music company and a major label. He faced personal tragedies, including the loss of his wife Jacqueline in 2021. Survived by his children, Nicole, a former U.S. ambassador, and Alexander, a producer, Avant's legacy transcends music, embodying resilience, mentorship, and quiet power. In the aftermath of his passing, industry giants, politicians, and social activists alike have extolled his virtues. As expressed by Questlove, Avant impacted so profoundly that those he influenced went on to influence others. His life and career are a testament to the transformative power of mentorship, determination, and passion. Tributes to Clarence Avant. Number 10. Melvin Barcliffe, a hip-hop luminary and unforgettable voice of his era. Magoo, whose real name was Melvin Barcliffe, tragically passed away on August 13th at the age of 50. An iconic figure in the hip-hop world, Magu's untimely demise has left the industry and fans worldwide in deep mourning. Hailing from Norfolk, Virginia, Melvin's passion for music began during his teenage years. He is most renowned for his pivotal role in the dynamic hip-hop duo, Timbaland and Magu. Throughout his illustrious career, Magu collaborated with the likes of Missy Elliott in Beat Me 911 Inches and contributed to hits such as up Jumps to Boogie with Timbaland. Magoo's earliest musical endeavor was with the group Surrounded by Idiots, where he collaborated with Tim Mosley, popularly known as Timbaland. The duo eventually fostered a deep connection, which led them to be part of Devante Swing's collective Swing Mob, introduced by their mutual friend Missy Elliott. In 1995, post their time with Swing Mob, the duo formed Timbaland and Magoo, marking the onset of their fame journey. They released their debut album, Welcome to Our World, in 1997, which skyrocketed in popularity, selling over 1.6 million records. This was followed by several other impactful albums, with their music resonating deeply with fans globally. Magu was also fondly remembered for his signature one-liners in his tracks, which he believed made a lasting impact. Despite his success and adulation, he often spoke of the industry's challenges noting the financial struggles and personal sacrifices, including time away from family. In 2021, a 
a distribution deal led to the re-release of Timbaland and Magoo's albums, ensuring their legacy continues for new generations of fans. As we remember Magoo, we pay homage to a hip-hop legend who not only crafted memorable tracks, but left an indelible mark on the hearts of many. Tribute to Magoo. Number 9. Ben Terry, a guiding force through storms and life. The renowned Southwest Louisiana meteorologist, whose calm demeanor and urgency steered viewers through numerous weather challenges, passed away on August 13 in Lake Charles at the age of 40. Ben left behind a legacy of dedication, resilience, and heart. For over a decade, Ben provided unwavering weather updates on KPLC, guiding his community through hurricanes, floods, and even the rare snowfall. His journey battling colon cancer became an emblem of courage as he publicly documented his treatments, urging many to prioritize health screenings. Hailing from Kosciusko, Mississippi, Ben's passion for meteorology was evident from his academic pursuits at Mississippi State University. His expertise found homes in various U.S. communities before anchoring at KPLC in 2011. His exceptional skill in simplifying intricate weather forecasts made him a household name, but it was his spirit, tenacity, and faith, especially during his health battles, that left an indelible mark on those around him. Earning national acclaim, Ben's candid response during the anticipation of Hurricane Laura showcased his genuine connection with his viewers. His own home was tragically swept away during the hurricane, yet his courageous reporting earned him a Special Achievement Award from the National Weather Service. A dedicated advocate for those battling Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, Ben also lent his voice to radio, contributed to the annual Gridiron Show, and was a devout member of the First Baptist Church of Lake Charles. Survived by his family, KPLC colleagues, and a community of admirers, Ben Terry's legacy as a beacon of hope and resilience will shine on. Tribute to Ben Terry Number 8. José Murillo de Carvalho, a beacon of Brazilian history and literature. José Murillo de Carvalho, a revered historian and member of the Academia Brasileira de Letras, passed away at the age of 83 on August 14, following complications from COVID-19 during his stay at the hospital Samaritano in Rio. Born in Minas Gerais, José Murillo was an illustrious scholar with a degree in sociology and politics from UFMG. He further honed his expertise at Stanford University, California, where he defended his thesis on the Brazilian Empire. His esteemed career saw him as a visiting professor and researcher at globally renowned institutions like Oxford, Leiden, Stanford, Irvine, London, Notre Dame, the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton, and the Ortega y Gasset Foundation in Madrid. He was also an emeritus professor at UFRJ and an emeritus researcher at CNPQ. Elected to the ABL in 2004, he held the chair number five and was a prominent member of the Brazilian Academy of Sciences. Throughout his life, José Murillo penned 19 books, leaving behind a rich legacy in Brazilian history and literature. Notable works such as A Formacao das Almas, A Cidadania no Brasil and Os Bestializados, stand as a testament to his profound understanding of Brazilian culture and history. As we remember José Murilo de Carvalho, we honor the monumental contributions he made to Brazilian academia, history, and culture. Tribute to José Murilo de Carvalho. Number 7. Rachel Lauren, a resounding legacy in music and composition. Rachel Lauren, an iconic figure in the realms of Canadian music, renowned organist, composer, and educator from Quebec, passed away on August 13 due to cancer at the age of 62. Her journey in music began with her organ studies under Lucienne Le Arel. 
Lauren's exceptional talent took her to the prestigious Conservatoire de Musique du Québec, a Montreal, where she trained with notable mentors including Gaston Arel, Raymond Davalui, and Raoul Sosa. By 1985, her prowess was already recognized, earning her the Maccabi Foundation Scholarship, followed by the esteemed Bourse d'Excellence Wilfrid Pelletier in 1986. Her melodious touch on the organ resonated in Canada, the United States, and France, and she was honored with the Conrad Latonre Scholarship on five occasions. Serving as the assistant organist at St. Joseph's Oratory from 1986 to 2002, and later as the titular organist at Notre Dame Cathedral in Ottawa from 2002 to 2006, her influence was profound. While her journey as an organist was notable, it was her composition that truly made her a luminary. Beginning her lessons at age 19 with Raymond Dav Louis, she became the esteemed house composer for Wayne Leupold Editions in 2006. Her commissioned pieces resonated worldwide, with her first being requested by renowned personalities Donald Sutherland and Phyllis Bryn Jolson in 1987. Her accolades include the Holtkamp AAGO Composition Award, the Marilyn Mason New Organ Music Competition, and the Distinguished Pogorzelski Yankee Composition Competition. The American Guild of Organists bestowed upon her their Distinguished Composer Award in 2020, cementing her status as a true icon in music composition. Tribute to Rachel Lauren. Number 6. Norman Drew, a luminary of Northern Irish golf. Norman Drew, a stalwart in Northern Ireland's golfing history, passed away at 91 on August 13th. Drew made an indelible mark in the annals of golf, being the pioneering player to grace the greens of the Walker Cup, World Cup, and Ryder Cup. His illustrious career began with victories in the Irish Amateur, North of Ireland, and East of Ireland titles. Turning professional in 1953, Drew showcased his exceptional talent in the Open Championship 15 times, with his pinnacle being the 15th spot at St. Andrews in 1957. Drew's exceptional feats were not limited to individual championships. In the Ryder Cup at El Dorado Club, California, he shone alongside Peter Alice and Eric Brown, standing undefeated in the singles. His remarkable season achievements landed him in the Ryder Cup, which saw him triumph at the Yorkshire Evening News Tournament and secure a close second at the Dunlop Masters. In 1960, Drew alongside Christy O'Connor crafted history at the World Cup, finishing fourth, just ten shots behind the iconic duo of Arnold Palmer and Sam Snead. He repeated this feat in the subsequent Canada Cup. Drew's illustrious career also witnessed victories in the Irish Dunlop Tournament and the Ulster Professional Championship, not to mention a commendable ninth position in the 1993 Senior British Open when he was 61. Dedicated to the game, Drew served several club professional roles across Ireland and Scotland. The Bangor Club, where he left a lasting legacy, remembered him as a golfing legend who was integral to the club's ethos. Tribute to Norman Drew. Number 5. Greg Tafralis, a stellar athletic legacy amidst controversy. Gregory Lewis Tafralis, renowned American track and field athlete, passed away on August 11th at the age of 65. Born on April 9, 1958 in San Francisco, California, Tafralis' sporting journey reached its zenith when he set the best world year performance in men's shot put in 1992. His athleticism and prowess also took him to the grand stage of the 1988 Summer Olympics, where he secured the ninth position. His sporting accolades include two silver medals at the Pan American Games, the first one in 1987 and the subsequent in 1995. However, the journey wasn't without its challenges. The second medal was rescinded due to a positive test for steroids from a prior meet. The shadows of controversy followed him, and in 1999, after a previous suspension, Tafrelis faced another blow as he tested positive for methandienone, leading to a lifetime ban. Despite the turbulence, his achievements remain notable, with his personal best throw of 21.98 meters in May 1988 in Los Gatos, standing as a testament to his talent. 
Outside the realm of athletics, Tefralis was known as the proud father of Adam, a former college football quarterback for San Jose State University. Adam continues the sports legacy, currently playing for the Hamilton Tiger Cats of the Canadian Football League. Tribute to Greg Tefralis. Number 4. Joachim Joggi Viljoen, a Springbok legacy of skill and sportsmanship. Joggi Viljoen, the celebrated Springbok scrum half and revered player for Griqualand West, took his final bow earlier this week at the age of 78 after a brief illness on August 12th. Born on the 14th of May 1945 in Cape Town, Viljoen's mastery on the rugby field was evident through his six test stints for the Springboks between 1971 and 1972. He etched his name in rugby lore by being part of the Griquas team that clinched the Curry Cup in 1970 and showcased his prowess playing for Eastern Province. Joggy's legacy in rugby was not just confined to his own achievements, but was extended by his son, Roloff, who, like his father, took on the position of scrum half. The father-son duo of Joggy and Roloff remain iconic, both having donned the revered green and gold jerseys. Stepping into the shoes of the esteemed Dowie de Villiers, Viljean made his mark with distinction, particularly during the box triumphant campaign against the Wallabies in Australia in 1971. Off the field, Joggy was remembered as a beacon of kindness, always willing to help and chose a peaceful life away from the public gaze in Nelson Mandela Bay. A monumental figure in South African rugby, Bill Joen's passing marks the end of an era, but his contributions ensure that his legacy will inspire generations to come. Our deepest condolences go out to his wife Dorothy, their children, and extended family. Tribute to Joachim Viljohn. Number 3. Andreas Dasher pioneer of ski jumping's parallel style, Andreas Dasher, the Swiss ski jumping luminary responsible for revolutionizing the sport with the parallel style, or the Dasher technique, passed away at the age of 96 on August 14th. Dasher's innovations in the 1950s challenged the status quo in ski jumping, making the Dasher technique the gold standard until Jan Boklov's V-style emerged in 1985. Tracing the history of ski jumping, Dasher's technique came on the heels of the Kongsberger technique, masterminded by Norwegians Jacob Tullin Toms and Sigmund Rud post World War I. Dasher, along with the contributions of Eric Windisch, the German Olympic ski jumper known for his aerodynamic jumping style, reshaped the contours of ski jumping, their techniques reigning supreme in elite competitions for over three decades. In his illustrious career, Dasher etched his name in the annals of ski jumping history when on the 3rd of March 1950, he set a world record with a leap measuring 130 meters on Heine Klopfer Skiflugschanze in Oberstdorf, West Germany. At the 1956 Winter Olympics in Cortina d'Ampezzo, he achieved a commendable sixth place finish in the large hill category. Dasher's legacy was not just a solitary pursuit, it was a family affair. His brother Hans Dasher also embraced the thrilling world of ski jumping. The world of ski jumping bids farewell to a trailblazer whose technique soared as high as his jumps. His contributions to the sport are indelible, and his legacy will be cherished for generations to come. Tribute to Andreas Dasher Breaking news. News 1. In a shocking incident, a house explosion in Plum, Pennsylvania left five people dead and multiple homes in ruins. The blast, which occurred near Rustic Ridge Drive and Brookside Drive, reduced three homes to smoldering rubble, injuring several and leaving the community in mourning. Among the deceased are four adults and an adolescent, as confirmed by Plum Borough Police Chief Lanny Conley. Allegheny County's Rich Fitzgerald lamented, This is a dark day for Plum and the entire region. With 57 firefighters attending minor injuries and emergency responders pulling victims from the debris, the full scale of the tragedy became evident. 
The mystery behind the cause continues, with authorities indicating a lengthy investigation ahead. Meanwhile, as local gas company People's Gas assures its systems were functioning correctly, a grieving community awaits answers. News 2. Sir David Jason, the iconic actor who portrayed Derek Delboy Trotter in the beloved BBC sitcom Only Fools and Horses, has made an unexpected announcement. At 83, Jason has decided to delay his much-anticipated appearance at the show's convention this October, citing the need for surgery and a new bionic body part. Opting to keep the details under wraps, the actor jested, I won't tell you which part it is, or you will all want one, and reassured fans that the source isn't the infamous Monkey Harris, a purveyor of questionable merchandise in the series. The convention has been rescheduled to January 13th and 14th, and Jason expressed his eagerness to meet fans with his signature smile. It remains uncertain who among the star-studded cast will attend, but attendees can expect another unforgettable gathering in Milton Keynes. In related news, Nicholas Lindhurst, who played Dell's brother Rodney, is set to star in the upcoming Frasier reboot. News 3. Former UFC lightweight fighter and present commentator Paul Felder, affectionately known as the Irish Dragon, has revealed a heartbreaking health update that threatens his growing passion for triathlons. While injuries are common in any athlete's career, Felder's recent revelation holds a distressing weight. Taking to Instagram, Felder shared his ongoing struggle with hip issues, a result of decades dedicated to martial arts. Recent severe discomfort prompted an MRI which unveiled a grim picture. Felder's hip joint has been so worn out that it's now bone against bone. Describing it in his words, he stated, I have the hips of an 80-year-old man. Though resilient fighters like Michael Bisping and Conor McGregor have bounced back from injuries, Felder's recent update seems grim. He fears his triathlon season is over and poignantly added, I just truly hope this ain't the end. As the MMA community rallies behind him, News 4. South Australia is in shock after the death of a six-year-old boy from influenza, shortly after his discharge from the Riverland General Hospital in Barrie. Premier Peter Malinowskis expressed his distress, calling the incident shocking and heartbreaking. While the Premier stated that deaths of young individuals often lead to coronial inquiries, he refrained from commenting on specific details. Member for Chaffee, Tim Whetstone, noted that other families had raised concerns about the hospital's processes. The hospital must review their protocols as we anticipate the inquiry's findings, he said, emphasizing the profound grief experienced by the bereaved family. The Riverland Mali Kurong Local Health Network confirmed their cooperation with the coroner, stating they have already investigated two other complaints. They assured that any concerns raised about their service will be rigorously addressed to ensure necessary improvements. The Health Network highlighted the qualifications and skills of the medical team at the Riverland General Hospital, extending their condolences to the affected family and entrusting the coroner with the investigation. The tragic death also resonated with the local community. The boy, a member of the Barry Football Club, was memorialized by players wearing black armbands. Club president Ron Foulds expressed the club's sympathy for the bereaved family and the entire community. News 5. A MiG-23 jet, one of the iconic aircraft from the Soviet era, met a tragic fate during the Thunder Over Michigan Air Show in Belleville when it crashed post the ejection of its two occupants. The pilot, Dan Filer, a retired Navy pilot and a collector of Soviet fighter jets, and a passenger were in the plane when they sensed trouble. They ejected just in time as the jet crashed, leading to an intense fireball, which was promptly managed by the emergency crews on site. Videos of the incident reveal two bursts of flames as both individuals were ejected. They were taken to the hospital as a precautionary measure, although no injuries were reported. The aircraft met its unfortunate end at the Waverly, on the Lake Apartments parking area, damaging some vehicles but miraculously missing the residential buildings. The MiG-23, piloted by Filer, was a unique possession, being the sole privately owned operational MiG-23 globally. Historically, this model, recognized for its advanced radar and missile capabilities, was among the Soviet Union's frontline aircraft during the Cold War. The root cause of the crash remains uncertain, with the Federal Aviation Administration currently investigating. 
Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Jill Janus, a metallic roar that echoed far and wide. Jill Janus, the iconic frontwoman of the heavy metal band Huntress, has left the world at the tender age of 43 on August 14, 2018. The incident took place outside Portland, Oregon, and marks the loss of a roaring voice that had been battling the storm of mental illness for a long time. From the band's formation in 2009 in Los Angeles, Janus became the face and voice of Huntress, contributing to three potent full-length albums. She powered through songs like Spell Eater, Eight of Swords, and Sorrow, becoming one of the few female vocalists in the heavy metal genre. Her distinct presence on stage, characterized by her flowing blonde hair and black leather outfits, set her apart in a world dominated by male vocalists. Outside of Huntress, Janus continued her passion for music with the Starbreakers, an all-female metal ensemble. Throughout her musical journey, Janus found company in Blake Male, the founding member of Huntress. Sharing nine years of memories, a home, and their brainchild, Huntress, Mial expressed his profound sorrow on social media, reminiscing the irreplaceable bond they shared. However, beyond her musical pursuits, Janus was a beacon of hope for many battling mental health issues. Her own struggles with bipolar disorder almost led to the disbandment of Huntress in 2018. Yet they bounced back with another album, demonstrating Janus's indomitable spirit. Today, as the world bids farewell to this metal queen, her legacy will be remembered not just in the melodies she left behind, but also in the courage she showcased in addressing her vulnerabilities. Tribute to Jill Janus. Number 1. Julian Bream, the lute's luminary and maestro of the strings. Julian Bream, an emblematic figure in the world of classical guitar and the mesmerizing realm of the lute, has passed away at the respectable age of 87 on August 14, 2020. From performing across global stages to fervently diving into new compositions, Bream's mastery was evident. His illustrious career spanned decades netting him four Grammy Awards from 20 nominations between 1960 and 1985. Self-educated on an instrument acquired from a sailor by his father, Bream's innate talent saw him burgeon into, oh, one of the most remarkable artists of the post-war era as lauded by the Royal Academy of Music. This prodigious talent wasn't just confined to the guitar, Bream's fascination for the Elizabethan lute propelled him into renowned concert halls worldwide. Moreover, his collaboration with Dame Peggy Ashcroft amalgamated poetry and music in a harmonious blend. Establishing the Julian Bream Consort in the 1960s, he rejuvenated the stage presence of period instruments, with the lute taking the limelight. Bream's humorous self-reflection during a 1991 California masterclass displayed his characteristic wit, suggesting the guitar was a mere hobby where he could stand out effortlessly. His later years were marked by resilience and grace. Despite physical setbacks in 2011, Bream's spirit remained unbroken. His commitment to the arts was profound, transcending beyond mere accolades and recognition. As the curtains descend on this remarkable life, Bream leaves behind an indelible mark on the world of music. His legacy lies not just in the strings he strummed, but in the hearts he touched and inspired. Tribute to Julian Bream. That concludes our coverage for today, but the stories of those we've lost continue to resonate with us all. We invite you to also watch our special feature on the 13 biggest stars who died recently, where we pay homage to the lives, talents, and legacies that have left an indelible mark on our world. You can find the link to that video in the description below, or click on the card appearing on your screen now. If you found today's video informative and touching, Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Immortal News for more compelling stories and tributes. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video. Stay safe and take care.